All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're so thrilled to welcome you to Light Language University's um, afternoon talk on tuning into and unlocking your intuitive gifts. We are thrilled as well to have this panel of expert women. Beautiful, one and all. Look at the, look at the panel you're going to be learning from today. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> so we are thrilled to have their expertise, and we know that you all are enthusiastic about this topic, but we ask that you hold your questions until the very last 15 minutes. We really want time to dive into these questions and give you as much education as possible in this first 40 minutes. So we do also wish to remind you this is all being recorded. When you ask a question, if you share information, please be aware that it may be on the website, it may be shared, it will be shared beyond this room. We're here to support you and we, we truly desire to support you in everything that you need. However, be aware that whatever you share is being recorded. Um, there will be no like healing demonstrations. It's not that sort of a, a session. We're just here to educate and support you as much as possible. So with that, I would like to introduce Light Language University. The mission of Light Language University is to inspire others who are awakening and aid in the imminent growth of the conscious awareness of being multidimensional. And that's why you're all here. You recognize yourself as a multidimensional being, and we choose to support you in that journey. I'd like to introduce our founder of Light Language University, Ms. Anna Noyce. So she is a, a dear friend. She's my own energy teacher. She is a human being that has so many modalities, so many tools in her tool belt, it's kind of stunning. So she's a master Reiki teacher, a shamanic practitioner, an Akashic Records reader, a medical intuitive, a psychic surgeon, a channeler, an author, a speaker. She studied mediumship and learned various modalities through her experiences using planetary energies, using sacred geometry, and using vibrational medicine. Thank you, Anna, for founding Light Language University, and thank you, Light Language University, for making these classes possible. They have tons of classes online, and they have sessions both today and tomorrow to support anyone who's awakening and wants to know more. So uh, with that, I get to introduce our beautiful panel. So we have, I'm going to go in here because I can't see, Ms. Sharon Whitman down at the end. Hello, Ms. Sharon. We have Dr. Kendall Ahrens. And then Miss Anna Noyce, we have Claudia Romo, Candace Taylor, and Dr. Tricia Seymour. I'm going to give each of you the chance to take about 30 seconds to a minute just to tell these people who they're listening to. What? No, tell them about you. Miss Tricia, would you mind leading it off? Oh, sure. Um, I am a psychotherapist licensed here in the state and have learned about my intuitive gifts, gifts as most of us, very, very young. Um, we do have a booth here. My husband and I are doing healings and we do readings and uh, mediumship as well. I'm also a trained uh, naturopath, so I do a lot of um, flower essences and herbs and lots of things to help people with the emotional issues that they're dealing with. And the mediumship and the psychic intuitive stuff really just kind of aids in what I do every day in my practice. Perfect. Is that it? Okay. Yes. <laughs> and I'll oh, and I'm a, work. And I'm a, a Reiki master, trainer, healer. And Dallas breath work. And breath work and light and color work and all kinds of stuff. <laughs> Again, love you said I had thirty seconds. <laughs> you said I had thirty seconds. I had to like condense it down. <laughs> I apologize. I apologize, Miss Candice. Please. Yes. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm so grateful to be here. I am a certified hypnotherapist, life coach, and holistic healer. And my practice focuses on helping minority women triumph after trauma. So I've been in practice for almost 10 years now. And I'm also a Reiki level two practitioner wanting to become a master. So I'm looking for that person to steer me in that direction. But I also, um, in my practice, provide my clients with any holistic you know, healing modalities that they need in order to, again, triumph after trauma. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Claudia. Please. Hi, everyone. My name is Claudia Romo. Uh, I am a psychic medium, a multimodal energy healer, and a teacher. My background is actually that I use most of my intuition in healthcare. So I'm a health th former healthcare executive, and my specialties were pediatric trauma, emergency services, and population health. So I used a lot of my intuitive ability also for psychic research. I am a medical intuitive as well. 
And a lot of the clients that I see tend to have those types of backgrounds in healthcare or science-based. I, I tend to be a good communicator uh, for that kind of thinker. So thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Ms. Kendall. Mm -hmm. Hi, Dr. I'm, Kendall. I'm, yes, I'm, I'm Dr. Kendall Ahrens. I was originally trained as a chiropractor and I still have a chiropractic uh, pay, uh, practice. Um, but I primarily focus with my clients on the emotional work and the spiritual work. So much of that um, spiritual uh, trauma and blocks and emotions that come up uh, play into our health and our body and how we feel. And so I focus on that, but um, I do mediumship readings as well, remotely, over the phone. And that's just been such a gift. Thank you. Love it. Thank you. Perfect. Flower Mound, Texas. I would love to let you know also, their information is right out here on the table. As you get to know them and you hear from them, you may wish to connect with them directly and, and dive deeper. Their information is all right out here on the table. If you can't find it after the session, see any one of us and we will get you their information. Sorry, Ms. Sharon. Uh, hi. Uh, my name is Sharon Whitman and I'm a sound and energy healer. Um, my journey began oh, back in the 90s. Um, I became a Reiki master and um, then later on I, I got into sound healing and that's what really captured my interest and really changed my life, uh, my own personal uh, health uh, crisis that I was facing at the time. Uh, changed my life, got me off the couch and up and gave me my life back again. And, um, and most recently, last couple of years ago, I, I also uh, took some shamanic training. Um, so I like to blend modalities. I like to combine my energy work and the sound healing and the shamanic practices and create new and different ways to reach people and help them on their healing journey. Um, and a lot of it has to do with unlocking their intuitive gifts. So I'm very glad to be here today. Well, following on that topic, sometimes it helps to hear someone else's journey so that we can navigate our own. Would you all mind describing or just relating the story of how you became aware of your own gifts and that process of developing those gifts and, and perhaps what those gifts are? Of course. Anyone? Feel? Perfect. So I grew up in a border town uh, that was very close to Mexico. So I'd say most of my life I lived in Mexico. I do come from both paternal and maternal families who have psychic ability, mediumship ability. Uh, so for me, growing up in Mexico is very natural. It was very natural. It wasn't shameful uh, to have ability and to see spirits. I uh, have been communicating with the angels since I was a very young child. Uh, it wasn't until I came to the United States. I had like I went back into the spiritual closet because it was not as normal to be here, <laughs> um, to be psychic in this world and I ended up going into the healthcare and clinical field, but I had two different awakenings. As a child, I knew I was a psychic, and I had mediumship ability, but my medical intuition really came much like a story where I had my own personal health scare. In 2013, I had a brain aneurysm. Mm -hmm. uh, while I was in the emergency room at a pedi very large pediatric hospital that I was um, in serving, uh, and while I was in the ICU, it's the very first time that I was able to hear and see Archangel Raphael, uh, who then started to show me about the injury that was in my brain so that when the physicians came in, I said to them, kind of in the back of my head, occipital lobe, there's no light, it's dark. Mm -hmm. uh, and they were kind of surprised because their, their explanation of that is somehow I must have <clears throat> heard that while I was in the operating room. <laughs> um, but I had very specific information about that, and that's where my mediumship ability really started to open itself up. And I, I became kind of known in our, in our pediatric hospitals like the human scanner. Um, I, could, I could validate information that the physicians and providers were then able to uh, utilize, you know, to, to then do different things. But... I think we all have our, our different journeys, um, but I use that to really connect to a lot of the clients and our students who come to me where we say, like, we think we're one thing, but the universe always has another plan for us and we're never done mm -hmm. developing our skills. Um, um, so to me, that was my experience in opening up. Perfect, thank you. My pleasure, thank you. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak? Yes, for me, um, my experience actually opened up as far as my intuitive gifts was at the age of seven. Um, I come from a very tumultuous 
you know, background as far as like my childhood. I experienced a lot of, you know, domestic violence and just to keep it there, uh, you know what comes along with that. A lot of addictions, I, I saw that growing up. And at the age of seven, unfortunately, and then fortunately, um, I had to go see a therapist and with my mother. And while I was in the actual therapist's office, she was, you know, implementing all of these different, you know, toys to do, you know, play therapy with me. But instead of me reacting to, you know, what she was doing, I started working with her. And she told my mother, and I remember this, she told my mother, you have a special child. And so once she told my mother that, um, my mother felt like, okay, well, this means my child can actually handle the trauma that's going on in the household. So instead of um, inspiring and uplifting me and encouraging me, you know, on my path as far as like a child, um, I got a lot of projection and lower vibrational frequency. So instead of transmuting that energy, of course, I didn't know that at the time, that's exactly what I was doing. So um, at age 11, when I was wanting to say run away from the problems, I'm a definite believer of the power of prayer. I literally went outside and I looked up in the sky and I prayed to God and he shared um, a message with me. And that message led me to become the first uh, graduate of college graduate in my family. Um, I was the first, as you can say, uh, left the porch. I'm originally from Fort Worth, Texas. So growing up in those times, it was very different from now. So um, at age 11, I definitely got my, my answer and my calling at the same time. And I knew that my purpose was bigger than what I was experiencing. And I knew that the pain that I was experiencing at that time would be to help other people. <clears throat> Awesome. Nice. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I'll share. Um, so I thought that my journey into uh, the alternative world began in the 90s, but actually listening to you, thank you for reminding me. As a child, I, was, I grew up in an abusive situation as well, and I always had in the back of my mind this, this thought, this feeling that God was looking out for me, and I didn't come from a religious family at all. So, and I never really fully understood that until much later. Um, but then in the 90s, my, my father was in a bad horseback riding accident and he broke his neck and was uh, mostly paralyzed and the prognosis wasn't very good. So I said, well, I've got to find an alternative to help him. So that led me on my search. And I found Reiki and took my training in Reiki and became a Reiki master and I believe that that did help him in his healing journey. He lived for another 17 years beyond that, which was very unusual. Um, so that, that got me on my journey. But then I had my own healing crisis in uh, beginning in 2001, um, but it, I probably bottomed out in about 2008. I had fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue and a few other things going on. And, I literally was on the couch. I couldn't move, and um, I thought, I'm either literally going to die or I'm going to do something about it. So I started doing Reiki on myself, and don't have, that's whole, why I wasn't doing it all this time, that's a whole other story. But anyway, so I finally <laughs> decided to, to take action and, and help myself. So I started doing Reiki, I reached out into the community, and through a synchronicity series of events, um, I came upon sound healing, and I remember the first time I heard the Tibetan bowls played, I thought, oh my gosh, this is what my body needs, right? And so I learned about that, and then that just led me on, led me on a journey to explore different um, healing modalities, mostly in sound, um, with gongs and Tibetan bowls and crystal bowls and tuning forks, and, um, but it's, it's really changed my life. But so through two different, from my father's and my own personal um, you know, physical uh, journey. And then the, 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 I, I thought it was just a physical journey, but then of course as uh, my eyes were opened, I realized, no, this is much more than that. It's, it's my spiritual journey and I'm healing on, you know, physical, emotional, and spiritual levels. Fantastic, thank you. Um, yes, my, my journey was a little more gradual. I grew up in a really religious household where my dad was a pastor, so when I was seeing shadows and feeling bad energy, especially if it was in church or somewhere like that. Um, it wasn't really acceptable, so I just kind of stayed fearful about any kind of gifts and didn't look into it, just, ah, I don't want to go there. 
And uh, so it was gradual because I got all the way up to um, going to chiropractic school and meeting some other people that were highly intuitive. And then I took some classes that really opened the door to a lot of spiritual gifts. One was body talk, another was uh, mindscape. It's like a meditation platform. And once I started opening that door, I realized you can learn this. You can open your gifts and explore and learn this if you let down some of your filters, some of the blocks you have towards maybe seeing angels or um, seeing certain things or, or hearing information. Um, once you let that judgment go, it just opened up and then a brand new world started. It was like it was like you were different. You'd seen the world different. You weren't scared of death anymore. And you could walk through life with a new gratitude about things. And then I continued to take classes and work with patients. And, and then I started seeing there was much more spiritual concepts coming through when I was working on somebody physically. So I'm adjusting someone. I was like, man, this problem keeps coming back. Like, is there an emotion there? Is there a spiritual trauma? You know, what else is there? And I'd start seeing things pop up off the body in an energetic <laughs> realm. And that's the moment you have to be brave. You're like, I'm here. I see it. Are they going to accept what I have to say about it? <laughs> Sometimes that's gauging, yeah. Yeah. gauging how you should interact mm -hmm. and use your gifts. But this has come into such a beautiful space where it actually turned directly into mediumship because I'd be working on people, and then I'd see someone else, <laughs> like uh, you know, a loved one that had passed on, and decided to start sharing about it. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. I think. Go ahead. You want to go? No, I'll go last. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, from a very young age, I realized I was an empath. I didn't know the word, but I knew I could feel emotions of other people. And I had adults come to me and say, wow, you're such a great listener. You should go into psychology. So guess where I went? <laughs> um, but uh, I realized that I had a, I too was in a very religious family. Luckily though, my mother actually went into Pentecostalism. And so that meant that they had faith healers and they predicted the future and they had prophecies and they had all kinds of stuff. And so whenever I heard voices or I saw something, as long as I said the Holy Spirit told me, I was good. <laughs> Matter of fact, even talking to dead people, I, I would say, you know, so-and-so, a cousin who died or passed away, came and told me blah, blah. And my mother would go, cool, tell me more. You know, and, but because she had been exposed to the Pentecostal movement, it was okay with her. So it was very interesting dynamic, um, as long as it was still in that, that vernacular. Uh, I ended up going for my master's degree to a Southern Baptist seminary. So that was intriguing, and, um, <laughs> and being able to, again, see things and sense things that other people didn't see and sense, and how to couch that and how to phrase that so that people can hear what it is that you have to say. And it wasn't until um, somewhere in the 80s, 1980s, that I started hearing from archangels, and I started getting visions, and I started um, opening myself to uh, mediumship and seances and just a bunch of different things. And so I've channeled in um, cards that I read um, with symbols from the Archangel Raziel. Um, I do art and jewelry and all kinds of things that I do all intuitively. Um, as I said, I am a, in practice as a psychotherapist and I use lots of different modalities that I have and that I know to help people improve their lives. And it's just been an interesting journey. And I think, I know you're going to ask questions, but I think the biggest thing that someone said to me along the way is suspend your disbelief. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you hear it or see it, just say it. Hey, you know, I just saw a shadow go by. You know, you see your pets, right? Your pets are in there, watch something in a, wind, in a corner, and you're like, what are they looking at? <laughs> but they may see a shadow go by, or a person, or a being. And the more you work with it, for me, the more I worked with those abilities and people as I worked with them, the more it became stronger, because I trusted in it, and I believed in it, and I trusted that what I was hearing was accurate for the person in front of me. 
And so sometimes I'll say something to someone and they'll just be like, how'd you know that? And I'm like, well, I just heard it in my head. <laughs> someone just told me, oh, by the way, that's your brother. You know, you know, so I mean, you know, it's just, it happens. And to be open to it is just a cool thing. Mm -hmm. And I really encourage if you're starting to feel that, just embrace it and come to things like this where you hear wonderful stories of women who, and men who have had these experiences and don't quite know what to do with them. And I've had some amazing teachers along the way that have helped point me in the directions that I needed to go. Um, so it's been a great journey. Lots more to go. That's perfect. Thank you. That's perfect. Ah, all right. So mine's a little different. I was adopted at three months, and my uh, adopted dad had five children, and I was the only adopted one. And so uh, they actually lost their sixth child, and then they adopted me, and I was the one that he passed on the medicine to. So I've been studying with my father ever since I was a wee lad. So, laddis, well, however that is, <laughs> alas. <laughs> but, um, so I, I grew up with this amazing father. He was a, we called him a cosmic cowboy, and we lived on a ranch, and he was an artist, and he spoke, and he spoke to groups, and he was also uh, explaining how all of these things worked. He studied with the Tibetan shaman, um, well, the Tibetan monks, excuse me, I'm ahead of myself. He studied with the medicine men, uh, the Native Americans, and then also the Korandera, and then went into other practices of Buddhism and, and such. But what was, what was interesting about it is when I turned 13, I thought my dad was telling me stories, and they weren't real, because I wanted to be like everybody else. So I decided to leave that, close everything down, shut everything down as teenagers do, and go hang out with my friends. It wasn't until I was about in my 30s and married to my husband and have children that I had an experience in 2007. I wake up one morning, animals are awake, my husband's laying next to me snoring, and I'm awake, and these two beautiful light beings, they look as bright as the sun, standing next to me on the side of the bed, and they're just waiting there. And I close my eyes, and I open my eyes again to make sure I'm not dreaming, and I can still hear them snoring, I'm looking around the room, and they said, Anna, they know my name, and I could hear them telepathically, and they said, this is not what it's about. And I'm like, well, okay. So at that time, I'm a mother, I'm a housewife, I'm also a, um, working on the staff at the, at the church. I'm a jewelry maker, so I'm very happy with my life. And I'm like, well, what do you mean? And they started to show me my life. And they, every part of it, except for being a housewife and a, a mother, they said, this is not what it's about. And then I heard behind me. Now, there's nobody behind me but this wall. And I hear this voice, and it's a very strong voice. And it said, Anna, let me show you what it's about. And I went, no, I'm not. Nope. Nope, I don't know you. <laughs> You're kind of golden. so. <laughs> and um, I hear behind me, get her ready. Talk about fear, right? <laughs> get her ready. And these two beautiful light beings go, she's not ready. And this being says, get her ready. And then they faded away. And I woke up my husband, who was really enjoying his nap or sleeping. And I said, honey, honey, they're coming to get me. I don't know where we're going, but somebody's <laughs> coming to get me. <laughs> it, after that, I went down, and I call it Alice in Wonderland, down that rabbit hole, and my whole life turned upside down. What I thought I believed was not real, and what I believed, mm -hmm. it turned into something else. And mm -hmm. so as I went into this journey of awakening, and I started to, to realign back to what my father had taught me, the beings did show up, by the way. I started stepping into my power, started studying again, opening up to my dad, having that communication, going back into the energy. Four years later, these beings showed up again. And they said, do you want to know what it's about? And I said, yes, I do want to know what it's about. Because I woke up from a nap, and there they were. And they showed me the world, and it's dark. And they said, watch this, and one light, and then another light, and then another light, and another light, and another light, and another light, and then another light. And it was a world of glowing beauty. It was just light. They showed me, and they said, people are going to be waking up. Mm -hmm. People are going to start waking up. They're going to see things. They're going to remember because we're moving into this higher frequency of going in from third dimension into fourth and awakening all those psychic senses that match every one of your physical senses. And guess why our colors are gold and white? Because of the beings. This school 
if you ask me what I wanted to be when I grow up, I wanted to be a princess. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I kind of am with my husband, but uh, I never thought we would be opening up to educate the world. And we plan to go global. We want to educate and show you how amazing you are. Because each one of you, and I always ask this, how many light workers do we have? And very few people raise their hand. But I want you to know that every one of you is a light worker. Every one of you is connected. We're not special up here. We've just been doing this a while, and so we, we kind of know what we're doing. But we are here to guide you, to help you, because you're going to be, and you are, one of the beautiful lights that lights up this world, because the world is changing. And it's going to be different. It's not going to be what you're we're moving in from the solar plexus. If you know the chakras, which is power and control, and we're learning, we learned about that. We've moved into the heart, and the heart space is opened, and here we are. So thank you for joining us for this beautiful journey. That is absolutely perfect. Perfect. So it sometimes helps to hear, like we've talked about trusting and 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 just following along with what you're feeling. I think it would help a lot if we could identify just some of the things that people might not recognize that they're hearing or feeling as gifts. Can we talk about what some of the gifts that people have are? Like kind of an exhaustive um, examination, if you will. Just what kinds of gifts have you encountered in yourself and in others so that people might see something that they didn't maybe recognize as a gift or, oh, hey, wait, that, that, I feel that or I hear that or I, you know, I see that. Open it to the table. Well, I think I think a common one that probably everybody in this room experiences is that the little voice, <laughs> the one that says, "Get out of this lane right now," <laughs> or "Don't take that route," or "Don't do this," and you're you're um, tapped into something higher than yourself, and that is usually just the beginning of you trusting. Like, okay, there's something else here. Um, the other thing that a lot of people have, I think, that pops up is dreams, vivid dreaming, dreaming of loved ones that have passed, dreaming of spiritual concepts, uh, dreams come through, and then people start thinking about that. Wow, well, crazy dream. But if you start thinking and opening that door, um, then you start seeing these other synchronicities in life, um, just everyday life, walking through, and you'll, you'll see things that you need, things that help guide you and, and put you into flowing in your direction. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. And to piggyback on that, I think to add to that, I think, you know, the, the types of senses that we have are the seeing, the feeling, the knowing, <coughs> smelling, tasting, all of those kinds of things. But... You know, when, when people ask me that question is, how do I know the difference between like hunches that we get versus like, when do I know that I have ability? I always say, a pattern. It's like, if you keep getting something a dream, if you dream all the time and consistently dream and then those dreams give you information that then becomes true and it continues to happen, that's not just a hunch. Mm -hmm. You know, if you keep seeing things in your mind's eye that have a lot of detail and you consistently see that or you keep hearing that same voice over and over and over in things that you may not necessarily know because of your experience, it's more than a hunch. You know, so I always say it's like it has synchronicity, it has pattern, it has repetition, it has, it's more than. Mm -hmm. uh, so all of those senses, I think, but elevated, activated. And so if you ask every person how you get your hunches, everybody usually has a description. I hear it, I feel it, I dream it, I know it, I taste it, I smell it consistently. Mm -hmm. That's perfect, yeah. yes. And you mentioned synchronicities, and I think that's definitely part of it. So uh, again, very simple things that people can relate to are the phone rings and you know who it is, or you think about a person and then they call you. Mm -hmm. Or you think about a person and you call them and they're so happy to hear from you because there was something they needed to share or something they needed to talk to somebody about and they're so glad you called. So those kind of synchronicities as well as I think kind of give you a, a hint. Um, and with the, with the seeing, sometimes you may just see something in the corner of your eye and you're like, what was that? Well, there's nothing there. Well, maybe it was. Or you hear something and you're like, did you hear that? And nobody else heard it. Those are things to pay attention to. So it's really, especially as that you said, when it comes at first, it's very subtle for many, many people. 
and um, our egos usually get in the way and go, oh no, I'm going crazy, or you know, oh that was nothing, or or whatever. And it's a matter of again trusting it. And the more you learn to trust those hunches and those sounds and those sights and those feelings, the more you're feeding that, and it will grow. Mm -hmm. And so it's really about, as I said, suspend your disbelief. Why not? Why, why not? Why can't you talk to dead people? Why can't you know what's going to happen five minutes from now? Why not? Time is fluid. Um, it's, it's all very... Um, it's all a dream, if you think of it that way. And you can, in your dreams you can fly, in your dreams you can do anything. And so when we get back in our bodies, we're like, oh no, I can't do that. But if you'll let yourself go like you do, I mean, there's just, it's unlimited what your potential is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. That's perfect. Would anyone else like to piggyback on that? Yes. Yeah, I think that um, something that everyone here has and maybe doesn't realize is the, the innate ability to heal. I mean, if you cut your Perfect. finger, you don't have to think, oh, heal, heal, heal. Your body has an innate intelligence built in that it automatically does that. Well, you can take that then a step further when you, you understand that we're energetic beings and how the energy flows. Um, that's what Reiki opened me up to was understanding how I can help myself heal um, and then be, be in a position to help others heal as well. Um, and also, as you mentioned about you, you got the information about, you know, the the brain. It was a, a tumor brain aneurysm. A aneurysm. So, you know, who knows our body best but ourselves? If we would just but listen mm -hmm. and tune into our body and and understand it on an energetic and a spiritual level. So, uh, for me, that's where I started. I think that's a really good place for a lot of people to say, well, you know, I'm not psychic. I can't see this or hear this. But if we start with our own bodies, that's a great great stepping off point into the journey of our spiritual development. Mm -hmm. I found that the more that I moved closer to my heart center and actually allowed myself to love unconditionally and even forgive mm -hmm. actually increased <laughs> my gifts. I didn't realize that the power of forgiveness. Mm -hmm. When you forgive others who have, you know, hurt you in some kind of way, whether it was knowingly or unknowingly, forgiving yourself for who you were in that moment and doing what only you knew what to do at that time actually helps you to, you know, become more aligned with yourself. I think when you want to tap into your intuitive gifts or even your spiritual gifts, it always starts with you. It starts with keeping a pure heart. And I think that's really stems from the message that I received as a child to make sure I keep my heart light. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, I didn't understand that. My ego mm -hmm. fought it. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. In 2012, I literally found myself once again um, homeless. And I'm like, why am I keep going through these same repetitive cycles over and over? And then I heard a, a, someone call my name. And I'm like, wait. I literally stood up because it was so loud. I'm like, who's that calling my name? No one else is in the house. But that calling of my name was, hey, you need to check in with your heart. What are you holding on to that is preventing you from going to the next step or the next level in your life? And I realized I was holding on to so much you know, pain from the trauma that I experienced that at that time there would have been no way that I could have helped someone else come out of their situation without my ego getting in the way unless I actually lighten the load of my heart. So I definitely encourage everyone, you know, be intentional about, you know, how you, you know, spread your love, you know, share your gifts with others and make sure that it's coming from a true and pure heart space because that's what's going to help you increase your gifts. Mm -hmm. Yes. Perfect. Absolutely. That is perfect. I'd love to follow on from that. Um, as you know, especially people who find that they have a gift for healing, and everyone, as, as <laughs> says, we all have these gifts, every one of us, but people who are actively utilizing their gift for healing um, or any of their gifts, how to kind of really develop healthy boundaries, mm -hmm. knowing how much to do or not do, you know, the sovereignty aspect and permission aspect. Can we speak to utilizing these gifts in a way that is the most healthy? Practice. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> you go run over your boundaries and you go, whoop, that didn't feel good. <laughs> I need to put a boundary there. That was not okay. <laughs> it's really practice. And <clears throat> along the lines of sort of similar to that, but a little bit different, I would say if you are inclined in, in this way, if you want to learn more about your own abilities and gifts, find classes, find teachers. They're online, they're physically in the Metroplex. I know, again, Light Language University does a lot. Um, uh, I'll make a little plug, we're starting, we have a healing center with Sharon um, over in Richardson. We're gonna start doing a lot more classes. So find classes, they're online, they're in person. The Metroplex is filled with them. You've got a whole venue of healers and teachers in the other rooms. And they all teach and they all do things. So find who you're drawn to because a good teacher will help you know how to set those boundaries. Um, uh, one of my things is that as a licensed professional counselor in the state of Texas, I'm also a supervisor. So I work with new newbie counselees coming right out of grad school and the boundaries are like zero. <laughs> they wanna help everybody in the world to get better. And you gotta go, okay, first of all, that's not okay. <laughs> you know, you're not gonna help them or make them do anything. You have to let them do their own thing. You just have to help them figure it out on their own. But teaching them how to have good boundaries, it's because I've been through that. And so find somebody that you really resonate with who's a teacher and ask if you can study with them, if they're teaching classes, what it is that you can learn from them. And then you learn what you can from them and then you move to another teacher. You find somebody else that res you resonate with. But I think for me, it's always been about finding, and it's through guidance, listening to that little voice inside that says, go talk to that person. You know, <laughs> oh, no, nope, that's the one you need to go with. And, and just listening to that little voice inside and following it and finding the people you need at that moment to help you. Perfect. Um, do, does anyone want to piggyback onto that or should we move? Yeah, uh, just, just real quickly, I think that, you know, think of your intuitive or spiritual gifts um, kind of like your muscles, you have to flex them, you have to work them, you have to practice, as you said, to develop them. And the more you do it, um, the more in tuned, literally, you are to the frequencies of what you're trying to do. And uh, the more confidence you'll get, and the more that will open up your your spiritual gifts even further. Mm -hmm. And, and I oh, go ahead. I do like to say, like based on both of the conversations, that I follow a very simple rule that just because you can access energy doesn't mean you should. Mm -hmm. like, I, I do really think that sovereignty is something that you really have to consider with the person, that not everybody is ready to receive the information that you're getting, and sometimes it's just for your knowingness mm -hmm. and not to be shared. And so I think that when you do mm -hmm. take classes or you develop your own ability, you do get sort of these ethical rules that come to you around yes. mm -hmm. you know, what is appropriate and what is not. And so that's the big thing. It's like just because you can doesn't mean you should. And one last thing, too, is that even though I call myself a sound and energy healer, I'm not the one doing the healing. I'm creating a space, an environment. I'm, I'm helping to teach people get in touch with their own healing ability because each person is responsible for their own uh, health and well-being, and we're just here to provide guidance and assistance and create the space for that opportunity. So uh, really listen to your own self about what feels right for you because one modality might work for one person but not for another. So, you know, whatever you resonate with. Yeah, and I have, to, I want to add to it. How many people daydream in here are, okay. Guess what, you're clairvoyant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you may not know it. And how many people when you exactly hear the, the voice in your head that tells you not to go down? Okay, so you're clear audience. Mm -hmm. So we're using these terms, but everyone has them. We just, it's just how we, um, we put them with our language. So, yeah. Perfect. So do you have any, and we've touched on so many of these pieces. I, I'm not sure exactly how to ask this question. Um, interacting with others as your gifted self when we're out and about in the world. It's, it's, it's safe, it's this beautiful safe space here at the Wellness Expo and in this room especially. But when we're out in the world and we're interacting, and, and I know you guys have started to speak to this, what tips or tricks have helped you as you've really owned who you are and what you are to, to, to share that and be that light openly 
out in the world as you're interacting with others who maybe aren't there yet. Or family members or what have you, work colleagues. I think, and Tricia, you mentioned this earlier, is that we're not here to save everybody. We're not here to save the whole world. So what, sometimes when your, your gift opens up, you want to help everybody, and you've got to tell everybody about it. No, no, you don't. <laughs> so if, for, if you just show up in the world and let your own light shine, then you will draw those to you who are ready to receive what you have to share with them. So uh, we can get over exuberant at the beginning, especially when we're all excited about we, this new thing that we've learned, and, and that's great. But we don't need to just we don't need to be shouting it from the rooftops. We need to just be just nice and gently sharing it and exuding it out to the world, so to speak. And I do want to piggyback on that. Thank you, because that's light language. We think the light language is a verbal language. If you Google it, you'll hear somebody talking in tongues or or the galactic tongue is what we call it. But actually, every one of you, if you put your arms out like this, your aura, your energy field, only, did you know that only 30% of your spirit is in your physical body, the other 70% is hanging outside. Mm -hmm. So your aura, who you are, is a lot bigger than this physical vehicle. And what's interesting is, we're sharing information on this holographic energy. Look how close you guys are. And we can share it across the world. And there's, I just want to mention, there's four levels of consciousness. You participate whether you're conscious of it or not. Mm -hmm. And that is the individual, which is where you think, therefore, you are. That is the group consciousness. These are other groups. And you'll notice when you really uh, see something that's happening out in the world, and you go, wow, I really feel for that, or I really understand that. And we are drawn to that. Then you have collective, which is every human being on the planet who we decide as a collective consciousness that this is a table. Because, and, and we've got the scientists now figuring it out with quantum physics, thank you. That they're figuring out that when we all agree, this becomes a solid form because it's consciousness. Everything is uh, atoms and everything is particles and waves and it all comes because we all agree in this experience. And then you have what holds it together, one of my favorites, which is beyond what we know and it's omnipotent, what we call God, creator, uh, great spirit, however you want to call it, uh, oneness, it is what holds everything together. We are in the dream, and I think you mentioned that. We are in the dream of the creator. We are a part of oneness. But you, no matter what, you are the drop of, a drop of water in the ocean, and the ocean is you, and you are the ocean. So it's understanding. All you have to do, like we said, how many, you all are clairvoyant. You all are clear audience. You just don't realize it. It's like you're participating on those four levels of consciousness. So it's a big, it's, it's awakening. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. That is perfect. Okay, I'm going to open up for questions and answers. Um, I'd like to remind everyone we are being recorded. You are welcome to share as you're comfortable. We're here to support you. Be aware that this video will be shared. So anything that you share will be public. Um, I'll ask you, when you do ask your question, I want you to project not just for the speakers here at the panel to hear you, but also for everyone else, because I would hazard a guess that most of the people in here may have encountered or thought of your question as well and would love to hear um, what the question is as well as the answer. So is there anyone that would like to ask a question? No? You can ask. <laughs> <laughs> I can answer that question as far as what I found is once I release judgment on my gifts and say who I am uh, attracting and who I'm called to help, it actually helped me more because I stopped thinking about what I look like if I was to pursue my gifts or how other people would perceive me if, if I did it openly. So I would just, that would be my recommendation 
just releasing the judgment of yourself, you know, not criticizing yourself so harshly for a blessing that you received. Um, if you are being called and you do have gifts, it's meant for you to share, it's not yours. And so just like they said, we're a vessel that we're here to actually relay messages and help others. We're not here to, meant to help everyone per se, but once you get comfortable with yourself, even your own energy, you'll know it's okay for you to share that gift and who to share it with. Because it's all about feeling safe as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that, because that is one of the big key is I feel judged. Mm -hmm. right. That's because you're judging yourself. Yeah. If you stop judging yourself, you won't judge your gifts, you won't judge others. You'll know that we all have special gifts. Mm -hmm. And what your calling is may not be what someone else's calling in is, but you're still here for a special reason. And, and I will say, people are more kind and generous than you think. I mean, I, I worked in the healthcare setting in a, in a pediatric, large pediatric center. So when I came out of the closet, it came out to surgeons, <laughs> research scientists. <laughs> and, and I was like, great, I'm going to get fired on the spot. I know I am. I just know I am. But what was fascinating is I would say not everybody took to it, but they knew me. They knew my history. Um, they knew my energy, and they knew over time it, it validates itself. It's not about you. Um, but I found that people were very, more open-minded than I thought they were. Get, you know, I just had a, I just knew it was gonna. I was gonna have a certain experience, and it was like, it was no big deal. At the end of the day, it was no big deal. So, mm -hmm. so it really is about trusting that there's a reason why you you are being encouraged. There's a reason why you're being supported. There's a reason for all of it, and you're placed in the perfect place. You really are. You have to trust that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And as you do that, I think for myself, um, you learn discernment. So um, it's kind of like being on Facebook, right? Somebody puts something up, and they want to churn the water, and they want everybody arguing on some thread, and you just have to decide if you want to go there. Mm -hmm. And you make a conscious decision, and you go, do I really want to engage in that battle, and you might want to, it might be fun, I'm not saying you can't, or do I want to just go, you know, that's your thing, I'm going to go over here. And so for me, I had family members and friends that I could be completely who I was with, and others that I could not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I just had to decide whether or not I wanted to. And sometimes I did, sometimes just to be a little snarky, I, you know, would say something that I shouldn't know that I know because Spirit told me, uh, just to give them a little <laughs> shock. But most of the time, I just uh, really didn't feel the need to convince them of something that they weren't ready to hear. So as you've mentioned, what's really cool is when you do embrace who you are and you share your light, the right people show up mm -hmm. to hear what you have to say. It's like, you would, it's like you're putting out a, an open sign. You know, and you're attracting the right people, and that's learning good boundaries so that you attract those that you want to work with and mm -hmm. those that you want to have come with you. And, and all of that, again, is classes and teachers can help you do that. Um, but it is embracing who you are, being honest with who you are, and discerning. Pick your battles. Mm -hmm. And part of what might be, you might be feeling also is a little bit of fear. If I do this, what will they think of me or what will happen to me? And just releasing that fear because, you know, fear and love are opposites of one another. Mm -hmm. If you let go of the fear, embrace the love, the feeling that you get when you are embracing your gift and sharing that with other people, um, that increases your capacity to, to uh, develop your gift and to share it. So letting go of that fear, embracing the love or the heart-focused center, um, and then just trusting in that, that you know, that it is a gift that you are to, uh, meant to be used and to share with others. Perfect. And, and can I actually sort of ask a question? <laughs> <laughs> so I think it might be helpful if you have little simple things that people can do, like exercises or tools that people can use every day to kind of practice what we're talking about. Because again, they may still be wondering, do I really have this ability or gift? And if I do, how do I know? And how do I let it grow? And so I will say for myself, I would go to the mall, get a popcorn and a soda, 
and just sit on a bench. And I would watch people walk by, and I would just start hearing stories about who they were in their life. I did not need validation that it was right or not. I was practicing. And so for me, that was something fun to just people watch. Go someplace, people watch, watch their energies, mm -hmm. kind of see if you can see a, kind of an aura around them. Mm -hmm. See, you see a mom with her kids and they're all arguing and you kind of make up a story, you make up a story as to what might be happening there. And it just starts to open you to possibilities. And then when you actually sit in front of somebody and you tell them something that you shouldn't know, you're like, ooh, wow, it's real. <laughs> I really can do this. But for me, it was just fun to practice by watching people and making stuff up. Just make it up. That's a good place for you to start. Anybody else? What were some good I'm, I'm the opposite. Tools. I'm a very left brain thinker, so I need validation accuracy percentages. That's my brain. <laughs> <laughs> so, so when I was asking guys, like, well, I need validation, not just like maybe I'm getting it right, is what they, what they recommended, and, I, and again, it, when I first thought, I was like, how can this be? But they, they recommended that I go to a dollar store and buy the preschool cards that you get that have shapes on them. Mm -hmm. the purple triangle the red heart flip them down and see what you get and and over time mm -hmm. what you start to figure out is like did I hear it did I feel it did I know it did I taste mm -hmm. the red apple or whatever and you can over time you in, improve your accuracy right and it's something that's you can touch you can see mm -hmm. you can and before you know it you know everything underneath those cards and then you start building out of that then then I went to the more complicated ones with the five pigs and the ten hearts and the, <laughs> you know. So, but to me, I needed something to validate sci scientifically mm -hmm. for me that what I was receiving was real, not made yeah. up. Yeah, that's perfect. So, I, so now I do that all the time mm -hmm. for kids and adults mm -hmm. and whatever. I gift them, and I try it out and see what happens. And then also notice how you receive the information. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Would anyone else that, like to speak to that? that that's a great recommendation. Mm -hmm. I, I found another psychic friend, and we worked all the time on energy healing, on uh, testing each other's you know, intuition on colors or concepts. And uh, sometimes the information will come through like a density, like this feels heavy, mm -hmm. but it also feels like a concept, like it has a, a story or meaning behind it. So not always you just see the color or have it come through that way but look for yeah look for the ways that it, the information will come through and I think I'm a, I'm a big fan of um, setting up a meditation space because the first relationship you're gonna have is with your subconscious mind mm -hmm. we're in thinking busy mindset all the time so if you set up a meditation space it gives your brain a space to relax let go and then you approach that just with curiosity, no judgment towards what you're seeing. You could be in a meditation space, like for instance, when I set up mine, I saw a blowfish in my meditation space. Like, oh, what does that mean? Well, it's always a reflection of yourself, so you have to say, what am I feeling really spiky or defensive about in my life? And you start gaining that information about yourself and your, your life, your surroundings, and then you can start picking up information for other people. And definitely, I think definitely play. I was in a, I was getting a coffee and was meeting a friend for lunch and I was in a hurry and I was at a 7-Eleven. So I'm standing there in line. Actually, when I turned around for my coffee, I'm sta the line got big. So I got in line and I'm looking at my watch and I thought, well, I'm just going to play since I, I need some, something to take my mind off of the time. And so all I did was I just focused my energy and I pushed it out around me. The guy in front of me actually went like this, and I went, oh, because I pushed it out in front of me, and he, 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 went, he bowed uh, forward, and then he turned around, and he goes, ma'am, and he's smiling from ear to ear, and he goes, would you like my space? Well, first I was like, oh, <laughs> oops, yeah, I got caught, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Walk into a room, you're impasse, every one of you is an impasse. Walk into a room, see if you can change the frequency. Push the energy out. Push that love. All you have to do is feel it in the heart. Push it out. It does. It physically changes. I've actually thrown energy in a classroom. Just yes. made a ball of energy. Threw it. A friend of mine knocked it into the wall, and it knocked a mirror off on the other side. This is real. Mm -hmm. What you're playing with is real. Mm -hmm. Have fun. <laughs> <laughs> I found working with the elements helped me. So earth, air, fire, water. 
So if I need to ground my energy, definitely going outside and meditating while sitting down, hugging a tree. I'm a tree hugger. <laughs> Will help me to connect with you know my heart. Um, also, if I need to recharge, say from feeling like dense energy from you know working with a client who's you know experiencing a lot of trauma. If I start to say feel that that density. I'll go outside, I'm like, I need to recharge. I'll go and stand in the sun. I'll let the sun shine on me. So just knowing what elements work for you and also what theories work for you, I definitely co-sign with that card. <laughs> Help me with my psychic abilities. But just finding a different way that actually helps with your personality, um, with what goals you want to achieve, still being intentional about what you want to achieve, definitely will, will help. Thank you. Sure. And for me, um, my journey, a lot of a time is spent on looking at my preconceived ideas of who I am and what are the agreements that I've had with the world, what am I afraid of, um, you know, why can't I hear things or see things? Well, that's because we grew up being told that that's not real and we shouldn't do that, that whatever that's bad or whatever. We, you know, we, come, we grow up hearing stories and agreements about what is right and what is wrong and what should be and what shouldn't be. And we have to learn to let that go and realize that that's not my spiritual truth. And uh, spending time in meditation is important for me to get to know myself, to identify Okay, what preconceived ideas about myself am I carrying around? What do I need to release and let go of? What's holding me back from growing and, and, um, and sharing my gifts the way that I want to? And a lot of times it's just that monkey mind going on in the back of the head, rah, 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 I can't do this, I shouldn't do this, whatever. And realizing that's not real, right? That's not our spiritual truth and, and letting that go. I think that's important. I, I do want to say something. You know, in um, the end of World War II, they actually, as you know, created the atomic bomb, and, and it created a lot of destruction. But did you know that they created it out of the atoms that would fill an empty cup? They created something that huge out of an empty cup, the atoms in that. I mean, think about it. You, of course, we want to do the positive, because everything you do is going to come back seven times. But, <laughs> but even on that, you have the ability to... You're part of this. You're the ocean. You have the ability to use your intention, to direct your thoughts, to bring in the energy. Everything is here. Everything, you're perfect. You've just forgotten. And so we're here today to just remind you how amazing each one of you are and how you have the ability. Again, we're not special. We're all the same. Can I invite you, Anna, to teach all of them about the heart line and about choosing between frequencies? Um, you did a beautiful talk on that. Um, this morning we had another class on um, supporting your spiritually gifted child. Um, it, and when you talk about expanding the energy and playing with your energy, it might help them to understand about different frequencies and consciously choosing their frequency. Oh, okay, very, I'll do it very quickly. <laughs> yeah. um, my father um, took me into the, when I was eight, one day he brings me into the pasture, the horse pasture, and he squats down and he draws a line down the, in the dirt. And he says, what is the highest frequency, uh, and I, it was, I've heard this, you guys have talked about it, the highest emotion, and it's unconditional love. And so he wrote unconditional love, to love without exception. And he said, what is the lowest? And just to make it because of the time, it's fear. So he wrote fear at the bottom. And then he took a cross and he made a horizontal line. So we're actually looking at a cross. And he said, look at this. This is the heart line. So when you're working, you're multidimensional beings. Your thoughts, your, your energy, your frequency, all of that, like we were talking about, that we're, is part. You're, you're participating no matter you know, if you're aware of it or not. And what happens is when we're below the heart line, we attract those things that are denser. So anything below, anger, grief sadness, um, you know, hatred, hatred, yeah, all those negative emotions are below the heart line. And all the positive, love, joy, patience, kindness, goodness, you know, all of those wonderful things are above the heart line. So it, we can use this, and we teach this at the university, to use it, my dad calls it the tone scale, of where you are on the tone scale. So you've got two this jokes from the golden beings that like to hang out. And they said, two people walk in a room. You guys have heard this. <laughs> I'm going to use my hands. 
one positive and one negative, which one's stronger? And the answer is, whoever holds their power. Because if the negative holds their power and the positive matches the energy, mm -hmm. that's the stronger. Mm -hmm. Or if a positive comes in and a negative comes in and the negative matches the power, the positive is stronger. Mm -hmm. So it's really about, it, oh, by the way, if they don't match, then one of them leaves because mm -hmm. the energies don't, mm -hmm. they don't want to be around each other. Mm -hmm. So how many of us have been in a bad mood, walked into a room and everybody's laughing, and you're like, I just can't deal with this today, you know. <laughs> so it's really up to each one of you, it's a choice, how you want to show up in the world, how you want to shift. When you go out today, you're going to be with other people, you're going to be sharing light language, remember you're, you're outside of your body, and you're going to be, they're picking up information, you're sharing information right now, and you get to choose if you're going to be the positive or the negative because you're just as powerful as what's inside this empty cup. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Are there any, is there a last quick question before I close it out and tell you about the other classes that we have coming up? Question. We have to be really quickly, okay? Okay. Go um, for it. Religion, so I would like to ask, for those who grew up in a religious background, did you find contradiction between spirituality and religion? Mm, yes. 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 <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. But they're actually closer than you think on, yeah, uh, on so many, so many concepts. Um, the big thing Same I grew up with was language. it was just, oh, talking to dead people is wrong. Their spirit ascends to heaven. They're not accessible. And so I had a big block against mediumship until it came through, and then it was really beautiful. Um, so, yeah, I feel like... Um, yeah, it's um, it's more it's more judgment and belief system that creates a block. And if you um, you know your heart space is clear and you go into that experience open minded or exploring your gifts open minded, and expect those good things to come into your life and teach you, then you're just always learning. You're just always learning and gravitating towards a really beautiful state. Perfect. Thank you, ladies, Thank you. all of you. That was Thank wonderful. You. I know on behalf of all of us, we're so thrilled to get to hear you and learn from you. <laughs>